there are huge challenges when you introduce nanoparticles into biological systems. And so when you introduce them into the body, they tend to wind up in the liver because that's actually what your liver's for. It's for filtering out um, foreign stuff. And so um, one big problem is trying to get the nanoparticle to where you want it to be, like in the tumor, as opposed to just simply deposited in the liver. Um, also, when cells deal with these systems, they tend to take them up and you can decorate their surface in order to increase that efficiency. Uh, but sometimes they actually just wind up um, spitting them out again or, or they hang on to them for a long time. So these are challenges that um, uh, we need to still address in the field, which is to better turn, tune that surface chemistry uh, and the proteins that are all stuck to the surface um, so that we can get it to do what we want to. If you think about um, biomolecules in general, proteins are one step up more complicated. Um, so it becomes a harder problem when you want to put proteins onto nanoparticles. Um, however, there are some really key applications that we want to improve uh, by doing this. And one is to look at uh, glucose sensors. So glucose sensors use uh, a protein called glucose oxidase. And in order to sense it, you have to put the protein onto some sort of uh, surface in order to electrically detect the amount of glucose that you have. And so what we tried to do is to look at, okay, if I'm going to take a protein and put it on a nanoparticle surface, um, how can I improve the, um, that interface so that the protein is more function, functional? We work primarily with gold nanoparticles because um, they're the most bio biocompatible um, and the, most, uh, the easiest to modify their surface chemistry so that they can go through the bloodstream and experience uh, less surface fouling. Um, but others have uh, worked with other materials, uh, such as uh, magnetic oxides um, and other metals as well. One exciting thing about nanoparticles is that they absorb where tissue does not. So that means you can use a laser to excite them through tissue or in the blood. Um, and this means that we have a way to externally control uh, how they interface to biology. So this means from the outside world we can hit some sort of button and uh, use it to talk to the nanoparticles so they can impact some uh, biological process. Now other people have uh, really found this useful for uh, developing tumor therapies. So in other words, using a laser to burn a tumor um, through the tissue. And these are very exciting um, uh, applications of how one would use gold nanorods. Um, but one way that we're excited about is to use it for multiplex control. So in other words, use two different lasers to control two different types of nanorods. Um, so one way we're thinking about using this is to use it for combination therapy, where you have a drug um, or a combination of drugs that needs to be delivered. Um, and one of these challenges is that if you have a drug cocktail, you need to tune the rate of release of each of these individually for the best efficacy. Um, this is really hard in a system where you have a, a passively released drug or something that just leaks drugs out at a constant rate because all these drugs will come out at, at maybe the wrong rate. So what we were able to do is to use nanorods so they can actively control the release of two different species by using two different lasers. We decided to take this one step further and use it to switch on and off blood clotting. So in other words, to use the, the pair of nanorods as an on-off switch. And so uh, one big problem in blood clotting is that uh, we don't have a really good way of controlling uh, blood coagulation or when you form a clot. So um, typically when you cut yourself, um, your body has this great cascade that will say form a clot right here and now. And our only way of controlling coagulation is really one-sided. So the predominant use uh, in medicine is to use anticoagulants, which are basically just blood thinners. Um, these are things like heparin or warfarin or aspirin, and all they do is thin the blood. And the problem with them is that they are, there's no way to switch them off specifically. So you simply have to wait for them to clear the body or for you to just get rid of it. So it's kind of like you have a light switch and you can switch it on, but in order to switch it off, you just have to wait for the bulb to burn out. So what we wanted to do is to come up with a way to be able to switch it off and back on again uh, using uh, gold nanorods. And so this takes advantage of the fact that we can have two different nanorods that can be excited at different wavelengths uh, independently. And so the way we do this is actually just to use a very simple molecule of DNA. Um, people have discovered that there's this small piece of DNA that will fold and bind to one of the proteins inside the blood cascade and basically stop it. 
So we can trigger that release to um, release, uh, tr trigger that nanorod to release that molecule and it will bind um, and stop blood coagulation. But then on the other nanorod, we have an antidote, which is something that will simply bind to that first inhibitor, so it will reverse the effect. And so by doing this, we can use one wavelength to uh, stop blood clotting and then the other wavelength to turn it back on.